That's some devotion to your goats, man. Hi friends, my name is Julie. I'm Daryl. And welcome back to our farm. We've been rotating our goats around our property for the last couple weeks, and today we are coming into an area that they really haven't been. So that's gonna mean a lot of forest clearing to be able to get these electric netting fences in place. So some of you have asked for us to show how we clear our paths through the woods for our goats and to get these fences through. So that's what we're gonna show you today, a little bit more in-depth look at it. We also have a new tool. It's a little handheld chainsaw that we're gonna try out. All right, let's see how this goes. So the area that we had the goats in yesterday is an area that we've put them in before. It was really easy to fence. Today, we're trying to put them into this. And if we walk back just a little bit more, you're gonna see how thick it is. Now, my estimation is the goats go through this eight hours pretty good guess we'll see so the goats really stripped this area they really cleaned out all the underbrush they got a lot of the leaves off the vines so if we wanted to we could come back here and cut all the vines down to the ground and even get out some of the trees they killed by stripping the bark now some of you will say they did that because there wasn't enough to eat in this area it's not true the goats really love to just use their horns they scratch on them and once they peel some bark off they just go to town. They're getting certain nutrients and they also do it as kind of an anti-parasitic. So the good folks over at Saker sent us this little handheld chainsaw. It's got a four inch cutting width. I guess they seen our videos and noticed that we needed to do a lot of clearing. So we're gonna give this a nice little try out today and review it for you during the video. Now I have used it for a few things. So they sent me a tool and I just had to try it out. I do like that it's lightweight, it's portable. I wish it had a little self-oiling mechanism for the chain, but it doesn't. You just put the oil directly on the bar every so often so that it doesn't overheat. Other than that, I like it and we're gonna put it through its paces today. So when we're deciding where we're gonna fence the goats in, a lot of that is determined by the topography of the land. And in this case, we have this old stream bed at the bottom of this slope. And we really wanna keep the goats out of that. We've had problems with goats getting mastitis if they lay down in this, and goats really don't like getting wet or getting their feet wet much anyway. So that's gonna be our back barrier for this area. Believe it or not, the goats have already grazed this area behind me. And we try not to put them in the same area sooner than 30 days. We try to rest each area at least 30 days before they come back to it. And so for the front border of this fenced area, we're gonna kind of follow this cleared area here where there's sort of just a lot of pine needles and not a lot of vines or trees in our way. Now, typically we leave the fences up from the day before and that gives us a good border. And we try to leave up as much of the fence as we can because the less you have to move, the less difficult it is to do this. So Daryl has started picking up part of this fence that we need to flip and Come down this line instead. It's always a challenge not getting these nets tangled and inevitably they are great at picking up sticks and all kinds of stuff along the way. <laughs> so the fences that we're using are quite old at this point i think they're hitting about seven years old and they kind of take a beating you can see we're dragging them through wooded areas animals get their heads stuck in them occasionally 
they just they get snagged on stuff and they tear and the older the plastic gets the longer it sits out on the sun the more brittle it gets and the easier it becomes to tear it sometimes when we're just pulling on the poles to tighten the fence it'll snap right in your hands these fences do come with repair kits which is really just extra wire and you just knot it together and we're gonna have to do a little bit of repair on this before it's gonna hold any goats in yeah yeah look at this yeah it's pretty bad yeah Do you want me to grab some extra wire? You got enough spare? Um, I don't, honestly, I don't have enough to go across here to get it yeah. back. Yeah. Like to the bottom, it's fine. Okay, I'll go get some extra wire. Well, as you can see, those basket weaving classes in college came in handy. And obviously I didn't do too well in that class, but this is as good as it's gonna get today. It'll hold the goats and it'll carry a charge and that's all we needed to do. So as we're moving the goats through the woods, we tend to come along a lot of fallen trees and that's due to uh, heavy rainfall and the high winds that we get in North Carolina sometimes. So we got to get them out of our way and we're going to put this little handheld chainsaw through its paces right now. Now this is probably a little thicker than what Saker would say that the saw can handle, um, but I think it can do it. vines or carnivorous forest What the hell this tree is? Trying not to pinch that blade. I've even had big saws fail on shit like this. Mm -hmm. Now the little saw actually did pretty good on this thicker branch. Uh, we had some pressure coming down how it was intertwined with some other trees and it bound up the blade a little bit, the chain. But my big Husqvarna also gets bound up on stuff like this. So it did pretty good.
it's these vines that are really one of the biggest challenges when we're trying to get through here. They go all the way up to the canopy of these trees and they are thick and a lot of them are very thorny. So they're difficult to deal with. This is the reason we call our forest a carnivorous forest. All of these vines are everywhere. And almost everything in here has some type of thorn on it. Goats will enjoy that. Yeah. When we do have to cut a lot of stuff that has good vegetation on it that the goats would want to eat, we try to always throw it inside the area that they're coming to. If it gets wilted tomorrow, they're not going to eat it. So you want to give them access to it the day you cut it. Are you helping, Junie? Hmm? Are you helping? Yeah. Good girl. Oh, gosh. Once it's on the ground, we can go over it. That'll work. Find something, Bubba. hiding in there so the chain needs a little oil and to oil this little uh, handheld chainsaw they send you just a little bottle of uh, bar oil and you just dab it directly on the chain just a couple drops right just a couple drops and then you run it for a second without cutting anything and that'll move the oil all around okay resume fence putting up mm -hmm. Man, it's humid today. Okay, so that's the end of our first fence. And while we don't know exactly where they're gonna meet up when we're doing this, we do it so often that we have a pretty good feel for how long these fences are. And especially once we get within like five or six panels of the end, we can really match it up very well. So that's the next step is to flip the second fence and get these goats moved over here because we can hear them hollering, they're hungry. Funnest jobs on the farm is moving these nets through all of this. It does help a little that the goats have at least cleared one side, but as good a job as they do, they still leave plenty of vines and sticks behind. All right, now we get to drag this bundle of fun through all the stuff the goats has, haven't eaten. Sometimes these poles don't really end up where you want them to but we can always put in a little push post uh, and make a turn where we need to. Basically where Daryl's holding it right there. That's where we need to make the turn. So I'll go grab one of those. One of the biggest pieces of advice I can give all of you when working with these fences, do not lose your temper. It won't help. <laughs> We 
we try to always do these difficult areas as a two-man team. So one person, Daryl in this case, is laying out the fence where it needs to go. And then I'm coming behind and pushing the poles in tight where they need to be. It's also really hard to keep the fence itself organized because it likes to catch on itself. These fences are great tools, but they're also kind of a pain. You can see the end. We're almost there. I can come back this way a little, a little bit, so. All right. So Daryl's meeting up the ends. We tie those together and connect the nodes so that the wires conduct electricity amongst the fences. And although we were really, really close, we do have about an extra pan, uh, like an extra half panels worth of netting that we have to account for because you really want this fence to be tight. So we're going to backtrack a little and tighten it all up. Another challenging thing about these wooded areas is that when you go to set these posts, sometimes you run into just mud where it won't hold the post in place. And sometimes you hit tree roots where it just won't go in the ground. But I think we got it. We need just that chainsaw to cut that root right there. It's holding it up. Yeah, there's tree one. Little dive right underneath that. There's one little tree over there that I need cut too. Of course the ground isn't flat and heavily you get these divots and then sometimes you get just branches or in this case tree roots that lift your fence up off the ground and that allows a spot where especially a little goat can just slip right under so we're gonna correct that so although i know how to use a big full-size chainsaw i'm very unlikely to go grab one by myself unless it's an emergency situation but with this little guy, I feel very comfortable using it by myself. It feels totally safe. It's completely lightweight. It doesn't vibrate a lot. So I like this quite a bit. This is a really good tool for someone who isn't experienced with bigger chainsaws or that doesn't have the same sort of upper body strength uh, like someone like Daryl. Super easy. I like it. You might put a push push there too. Yeah, we'll see. So there's that little tree I'm like bent around. Mm -hmm. That looked pretty good. Yeah. Right, let's go get some grain and get some goats. So the only things we really have to move for the goats are their feed bins. We give them a little bit of spent brewer's grain just to get them safely into the area. And then we move their water tub. They've always got to have access to fresh water. But we do not move a shelter, and that's because we're putting them in wooded areas. So we have pretty good tree cover. We don't worry about any additional shelter. Now, at night, we're bringing them back into the barn, but they are 100% fine just being out here in the woods. So here's the plan. The goats are way up there in their barn. Daryl's going to go up there and let them out. He's going to lay the fence down, actually, so they can hop over it. 
You can see he's carrying a bucket that's to attract them. And then he's going to call them and run. He's going to run down this path behind me and show the goats the entrance to their new area. And I'm going to be down here calling them and herding them. Okay. And we scramble to get this fence back up before they figure out where the hole is. It always gets tangled when you're in a hurry. One more. Nope. Oh, yeah, you got it. Oh, yeah, we still need that push post. What's that? So we successfully got all the goats in there and nobody got loose. It's exactly how you want it to go. They are pretty well trained at this point. We'd like to thank Saker for sending us this little hand chainsaw. It really helped out and uh, we'll be using it a lot this season. Yeah, it's gonna be uh, definitely a useful tool in the kit this year. If you're interested in purchasing one of these, I will put a link in the description. We hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to leave you with a little footage of goats grazing to enjoy. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.
So the goats have been in here about three hours, I think now, and they have pretty much eaten everything that is easy to get. So our, our overall goal is to turn these woods into silvo pasture. So I'm cutting down some of the brush for them. Uh, previous years, I'd cut it low to the ground, but uh, those little stumps are kind of hard to navigate. The fences always get stuck on them. So this year, I'm going to cut them up a little higher. So I've cut down some of the smaller trees so that the goats can get to them, so that they can get the leaves. And then they'll also strip the bark off them and eat that too. This is so that we can get more grazing and more time out of each area. I think I overheated it. Uh, the battery might be dead too. Yeah, we have been using it quite a bit. Do you want loppers? I could grab those. That's some devotion to your goats, man. <laughs> you better get out of there. The stampede's Whoa. coming. <laughs> You'll have fun pulling that the rest of the way down. Mm -hmm. Hi, yeah, you can see these long vines hold these broken tree limbs up. They stretch all the way up to the canopy. Grape vines and thorny vines and I don't even know what some of these are. Yeah. Summer kudzu. Uh, some ivy. All kinds of stuff. This is great. I can push the shooting range back now. <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah, as soon as we make some of that forage reachable, they go for it. The tall ones will help pull it down more.
me and my marine platoon of goats. <laughs> we got this clearing thing. Oh. What do you think, Phineas? You like that? There's a downside to this, though. Hmm. These trees won't be here next year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, goats tend to put themselves out of a job a little bit. Yeah. But a lot of this does grow back. For it a does. couple years, at least. That's true. With repeated grazing, they will kill a lot of it. But then grass will grow in these areas more easily because of the sunlight. True. It's already opened up quite a bit. Yeah. Get... The chainsaws pulled off. So at first they were afraid of the noise and now they're really used to it in just a couple couple cuts. They're gonna learn it's a good noise. <laughs> yeah. Like seeing me with an axe. Yeah, exactly. I do like this little thing. Yeah, me too. It's making some of this a lot easier. It's a lot lighter than carrying loppers. It takes a lot less effort to use. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, when they've eaten all they can, 
We call the goats back in. Come on, goats! Come on, goats! Come on, goats! Let's go, girls! Come on, goats! Come on, goats! Come on, goats! Good goats! Good goats! Come on, goats! Come on, goats! Come on, goats! Come on, goats! Good goats! Good goats! Good goats! Come on, goats! Go to bed. Good goats. Come on, goats. Come on, goats. Shh. Shh. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yep. Just like Marines. They know where they're going. Just like Marines. Good train. Good routine. Yep, good routine. Makes a big difference with goats. And they get a treat. So, instant reward.